Ray from the Star Wars films is not a Mary Sue. Whew. All right. Boy. This is going to get a lot of hate from Last Jedi haters. Hate. It's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll deal with it. But uh, this isn't really a video about The Last Jedi specifically. I think it's a very good, perhaps even great film, but that doesn't really matter here. I won't be talking about Canto Bite or Holdo's Purple Hair or Kamikaze Attack or anything like that. I'm not even really going to be focusing on Rey throughout. That was mostly clickbait, I'll admit, though she will be the main example I use later on. Let's start by defining terms, and already we're going to run into some trouble. Mary Sue as a term in media analysis is very nebulous, and usually comes down to female character I don't like. I could honestly stop the video right here, but I want to explore this a little. The term originated in Star Trek fanfiction of the 1970s. It first appeared in a story called A Trekkie's Tale by Paul Paula Smith, published in the fan magazine Menagerie in uh, 1973. The story which the name originates was a parody of a character type that the author noticed in other fanfics. Mary Sue, at 15 and a half years old, is the youngest lieutenant in Starfleet. Everyone loves her, including Kirk, Spock, and Bones. She's secretly half Vulcan. At the end of the story, she dies of an unnamed illness and everybody mourns her passing. The term became widespread in fan communities describing obvious self-insert characters that are basically just wish fulfillment for the author. Originally, Mary Sue was only used to describe original characters introduced in fan fiction. It was only later that it started being applied to characters in so-called official or canon works. So let's go with that de definition for now. An original character in a derivative work who is special, pure, universally beloved by the cast, and is the best at everything. Now let's define fanfic or derivative work. It's one that directly builds on a story setting and characters established in an earlier work. You know what's one of the most famous fanfics of all time, even though few people think fit in those terms? King Arthur. Think about it. Arthurian legend is a hodgepodge of different works building off each other. It's even more fanfic than most fanfics, since there's no one definitive take you could possibly point to. Characters and events that we now consider vital to the story were introduced slowly across centuries by a variety of different authors. It's fanfic of fanfic of fanfic. The Holy Grail was introduced as late as the 12th century. And it wasn't originally even called the Holy Grail, it was just a magic grail. And originally it was Sir Percival who found it. But in most retellings it's found by Sir Galahad. Galahad, who was introduced in the 13th century in the Vulgate Cycle, in many versions, he's the son of an important pre-existing character, Sir Lancelot. He's a purest knight of the round table, chosen by God himself to be the one to complete the grail quest. He even ascends to heaven, carried by frickin' angels. But Galahad is never called a Mary Sue. Now, there are many reasons for this, as famous stories are well written and old enough to be grandfathered into the canon, but let's be real here. It's mainly because he's a dude. You might say Mary Sue isn't a sexist term because there's male equivalents, Marty Stu being the most common one. Yes, but this term is used far more sparingly. It's usually only used as a dodge to avoid accusations of sexism. By any fair standard, Galahad is a Marty Stu. If we include, quote, canon works in our analysis, Batman is as well, as is the Doctor from Doctor Who. And, yes, I'm going here, as is Luke freaking Skywalker. This is a common argument when people uh, bring up Ray's supposedly imp supposed impossibility, but it's worth repeating. Luke is special. He's a talented fighter pilot despite having no training other than shooting womp rats from his rickety flyer back home. Despite this complete lack of experience flying missions, he has chosen to be part of a crucial strike team to take down the Empire's secret weapon, which he delivers the kill shot on. He is strong in the Force even in the first movie where he received almost no training beyond blocking some laser blasts while blinded by a helmet. But we don't call Luke a Mary Sue or a Marty Stu or anything of the sort, and it would be ridiculous to do so. Luke is the protagonist in a fantasy movie. We expect him to be special, because if he weren't, why would we be following his story? So, Ray. Ray is a talented fighter when we meet her. 
She's strong with the Force and gets stronger as the movie progresses, and has some sort of special destiny that is yet to be seen. She's not a Mary Sue, though. She is a protagonist in a fantasy movie. She's special, yes, but again, it would be weird if she weren't. I'm sure fanboys would be just up in a just as up in arms if Ray were an incompetent load who had to be rescued all the time by more capable characters, yet still be presented as the main character. There was no way to win here. She was damned either way, so I'm left to conclude the problem is that she's a main character who is female. Now I hear the counter arguments already. I like Ripley. I like Sarah Connor. But those are good characters who aren't defined by their gender. They're not forced diversity. Okay. A few things there. One, forced diversity is meaningless. It, it's nonsense. Let's be real here. Eric Taxon did a video on this, and you should be watching that instead of my crap. <laughs> Link in the description. Also, Ray is in no way, shape, or form defined by her gender. Think about it. There's nothing uniquely female about her character or experiences. Even her name is gender neutral. You could swap her out for a male character with almost no changes other than pronoun usage. Er, I imagine they'd alter Finn's crush on her too. Not that Finn couldn't be gay or bi. Finn and Poe forever. But I don't see a major Hollywood blockbuster on this scale going in that direction with a main character. Prove me wrong, Hollywood. Prove me wrong. Please. But yeah, defined by her gender, she isn't. She just isn't. Her story doesn't involve her fighting or even facing systematic or individual cases of sexism. She doesn't give any girl power speeches. She doesn't, I don't know, menstruate on screen. I mean, really, what does defined by her gender actually mean in the context of this movie series? The case could be made that Leia in the original series is defined by her gender. I don't agree, but the, a case could be made. She's pretty much the only major female character. She's a love interest to Han and even a potential love interest to Luke in the first one. I don't buy that the uh, twin thing was planned, but what else? She's a princess, for Christ's sake. Like I said, I don't agree with this take, as I think the writing and acting do a lot more than define her solely as a useless chick, as Mac from oh, It's Always Sunny would say. But it fits more than Ray. I've heard the argument that Ray, being a strong female character, quote, was hyped up in ads or interviews for the film, but that's marketing. That's not in the movie. Who cares? And while we're on the topic of characters potentially defined by their gender, why are the examples these guys give of the reverse always Ripley and Sarah Connor? Ripley was originally written as a man or gender neutral or whatever, that's true, but her being a woman specifically is a significant part of why the first two movies work. Just like uh, the main character in uh, Night of the Living Dead being black was a last minute casting choice because the actor was best, but it makes the ending more meaningful. Ripley is fighting an evil rape monster. The second movie is all about motherhood. I mean, come on. And Sarah Connor? Really? This is your not defined by gender example? to know. Fuck the men like you built the hydrogen bomb. Men like you thought it up. You think you're so creative. You don't know what it's like to really create something, to create a life. You feel it growing inside you. All you know how to create is death and destruction. Mom! Now, do you honestly believe the chuds who go on about how Ray sucks would have been okay with that speech if they hadn't grown up with that movie? I mean, I have issues with it. It's reductive, gender essentialist, and more than a little turvy, but I never heard complaints about T2 being part of a fast feminist agenda. It's something they're willing to accept or even embrace because they're used to it. Ripley and Sarah are smokescreens here anyway. Just like the arguments that Black Panther isn't an important film historically because Blade already existed, the implication that women and minorities can have one or two token characters, and anything that reflects the world as actually diverse is forced and bad. I also amusingly saw an anti-Captain Marvel troll defend his honest 
is obvious sexism by saying nobody complained about Furiosa or Wonder Woman. That's demonstrably false. I, I was there. I saw it happen. Don't tell me it didn't happen. So there we have it. Stop calling Ray a Mary Sue. And really just avoid using the phrase altogether. It's almost meaningless at this point to how, due to how broadly it's used. And even if you narrow it down to a strict definition, it's applied disproportionately to female characters. It's an unfair double standard that does nothing more than gatekeep what kind of characters are allowed to be included in the stories we tell. Now I'm going to end this with a bit of a swerve, though it's related to this topic. I do not like the movie The Phantom Menace. I think it was bad. That said, the abuse that Jake Lloyd and Ahmed Best had to endure was despicable. That goes for the abuse and hate campaigns that still go on by nerds upsets that, upset that particular movies don't live up to their subjective standards. Even if Ghostbusters 2016 was a terrible movie, it wouldn't have justified Milo Yiannopoulos and himself harassing Leslie Jones with racist and sexist tweets. Even if The Last Jedi were like if Manos and Monster Gogo had a stillborn, it wouldn't justify making a video of you cutting off the heads of Rose Tico dolls or harassing the cast and crew off social media. Even if Captain Marvel were nothing but two hours of Brie Larson reading the scum manifesto on repeat while giving the audience the finger, it wouldn't justify the obsessive and creepy videos I've seen about her or the transparent review bombing the film is getting. These things are not okay. The fact that they're almost always directed at minorities or women or just Anybody trying to, in some small way, make the world better and brighter for vulnerable people is very telling. We see you. We aren't fooled by your dis disingenuous excuses. You need to grow the fuck up.